Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome on. Welcome to um, another critical conversation. Um, I am your host this morning, Reverend Najuma Smith Pollard, um, Program Manager for the Cecil Murray Center for Community Engagement. And thank you for being a part of today's critical conversation. Uh, before we get started, started, I do want to acknowledge uh, someone who's on with us. Uh, maybe he can come off screen, Richard Flory, who is the new director for the Center for Religion and Civic Culture. We weren't sure if you were going to make it. Good morning, Richard. You want to just say hi, hello Virginia. to everybody? Hi. Hi. No, good morning. Sorry, I was doing other, you know, catching okay. up. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. Happy to see. I can't stay the whole time because I have yet another meeting. But I wanted to say hi and uh, say hi to John. Uh, John, you and I met several years ago at your office off of Wilshire Boulevard. Um, and uh, I, I don't expect you to remember that. <laughs> but uh, that was I, a long time ago. That was a long time ago. It was about 10, 12 years ago. So thank you uh, for being here. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Well, anybody with a spirit, anybody with a spiritual surfing board behind them is my kind of person. <laughs> John, anytime you want to go surfing, I will take you. I got boards for you. You count me in. I'm all, all right. In. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Richard Flory. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, Richard Flory is the new director for the Center for Religion and Civic Culture. So, so glad to have you join us this morning for just a moment. So again, I'm Reverend Najuma Smith Pollard, Program Manager for the Cecil Murray Center for Community Engagement. And uh, we are here today for another critical conversation, something that began with our office um, in the, the beginning of the pandemic, uh, where we take at least one time a month to bring critical voices at a critical time in our nation to talk to us about critical matters. Um, and so again, just very grateful to have all of you on. We are also um, in our fifth year for our CIT financial literacy, financial fitness program that begins next month. And so this uh, conversation this morning with uh, John Hope Bryant is a lead into that program and so we'll have more information about that at the end and how you can get engaged um, but um, as we are thinking about wealth building as a nation this year we memorialize the 100th anniversary of Tulsa Oklahoma bombing what is known as Black Wall Street and John is going to clear us up on that whole notion about Black Wall Street um, but um, I've known John since early 90s at Fame Church we both Papa Chip, Cecil Murray is both our father, uh, spiritual father. And so John is like a brother to me, but also some a mentor, someone that I follow, uh, not just on social media, but all of his books. And we'll see more about his books in just a minute. So uh, we want to encourage you to be engaged. If you're able to come off screen, come off screen, but certainly want to invite you to um, you know, be, be fully engaged in today's conversation by way of typing questions in the in the uh, typing questions in the box for those that may be watching um, via Facebook and also those that are here live in the Zoom room, use the chat feature to offer any questions. We have uh, uh, some of our staff here with us today that are also monitoring the, monitoring the chat, and then at the end of our conversation, we'll also take a few questions. Um, and just really grateful to have you on with us this morning. So our agenda for today is very simple. Uh, we will go through uh, just um, introducing our guests, which I'll do in a moment. Then we'll have about a good 30, 40 minute conversation with John Hope Bryant, uh, do a little Q and A. And then before we sign off and uh, for, the for the morning, we're gonna do something called a Mentimeter, uh, which will ask the question, before I thought, now I think, which helps us to look at what we've learned in this conversation. And then we'll review a couple of upcoming events and then we'll be done for today. And so our hope is to um, have you out of here at least by about 1030 or 1035. So again, I want to welcome my brother, uh, John Hope Bryant, who um, is an entrepreneur. He's an author, philanthropist, and a thought leader on financial inclusion, economic empowerment, and financial dignity. He is the founder and chairman and CEO of Operation Hope, the largest nonprofit provider of financial literacy and economic empowerment services for youth and adults in the United States. He is also the founder of the Promise Homes Company, the largest minority owned owner of single family rental homes in the United States. And he's also an author. 
And so uh, he has authored several books and we have put up, and we wanna invite you to screenshot this page. Um, he's also author of several books, all of which I have. Um, and I do believe if you are doing, if you are considering any kind of financial wealth building, economic, personal economics of any kind, you must have his books in your, um, in your personal library. The memo, Love Leadership, How the Poor Can Save Capitalism and Up From Nothing. And so without further ado, I want to uh, just welcome my friend, my brother, uh, John Hope Bryant uh, to today's conversation. Good morning, John. Dr. Najuma, <laughs> hey. the lady, the myth, the legend. Yes. The lady, the, 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 she doesn't walk on water, but she knows where the stones are. Uh, Dr. Najuma and I were both mentored uh, and raised. She was trained, furthermore, by none other than Dr. Cecil Chip Murray, who is a living legend. And, um, and Dr. Uh, Richard Flory is uh, continuing now that rich legacy. He unfortunately, just like my other mentor, Ambassador Andrew Young, uh, who is Mr. Atlanta, uh, built the, the 10th largest city in America economically and the only international city in the South, uh, trained by Dr. King, Andrew Young. Uh, you know, Both of them won't get their true riches of reward and recognition until they passed on the glory until they graduated. They've been, been promoted, unfortunately, but make no, make no mistake about it. They live on forever, and um, and uh, I hope they live forever. But they will live on forever um, because there's two times you die when you when you die physically and when somebody mentions your name for the last time. And people will be mentioning Reverend Murray's name uh, for a hundred years. Um, history um, has literally been changed. Certainly there in Los Angeles. Um, the 12th largest economy in the world, last time I checked. Um, it's, it's been changed because of him. Um, and all spiritual leaders after the Rodney King riots, as you know, Dr. Yeah. came to First Amy Church. Yeah. Uh, our, our Jewish brothers and sisters, yeah. uh, our Islamic brothers and sisters, yeah. uh, the, 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 the different denominations of Christianity, the, uh, the, our, our folks from, our friends from, from, from Asia, mm -hmm. all uh, denominations and groups yeah. found their way to the to the office of Dr. King, looking for counsel. Um, of how, where do, to quote Dr. King's last book, "Where do we go from here?" Yeah. Uh, and so um, we're sitting right now in a moment in history. Yes. But history does not feel historic when you're sitting in it. Right. It just feels like another day. <laughs> but but that doesn't mean the moment <laughs> is actually not historic. Right. Um, and um, I've got other things to say, but I'll shut up for the moment. I, I do want people watching this to, to, if you're from Los Angeles and if you're over 40 years old, mm -hmm. 45, I'm 54, um, going on 10, <laughs> um, if you're, then, then you remember, you do remember the Rodney King riots and you, yes. you remember probably some of my story. You have to remember that I was blown off. I was dismissed. I was not taken seriously. Oh, financial literacy. <laughs> oh, capitalism. Oh, here he comes again. They thought oh, you were crazy. Goodness. They thought you were crazy. Yeah, absolutely nuts. And I was not part of the political infrastructure. I wouldn't take sides. I wouldn't do anything that was typical or predictable. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't um, uh, act like a victim. I, right. I just, you know, I didn't fit. And no one, no, I, I wouldn't fit into a box. Okay, and no one could stop. Yeah. And, Reverend, and Reverend Murray refused to stop me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, he's like, no, let my son do what he likes. <laughs> um, go forth, son, go forth. Yes. <laughs> go forth. Go forth and change the world. <laughs> I've got you. <laughs> right. um, but here's what I know, Dr. Nijuma. Yeah. First they, will, first, they will criticize you. Yes. Well, no, first, they will ignore you. Yes. Then you, with momentum, they will criticize you. Then, yeah. then, then, and then when I, so when I met Dr. Flory, they were still sort of on the back end of criticizing. Then, oh, then they will try to copy you. Yes. And I just sort of, I sort of I, and then ultimately you win, yeah. right? And, uh, and then they also start lying on people. <laughs> they start lying. Yeah. On people. yeah. I, 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 get, I didn't give folks much quarter to lie on me because I was the most, most popular public person that no one knew how to access or have any information on so that door was was often closed you could make you can make stuff up but you couldn't say anything legitimate yeah. 
Right. Um, and so in, in my financials were tight as a, a tick, except top 7% of all uh, nonprofits in the country, yeah. Operation Hope, right up there with the United Way, American yeah. Red Cross on transparency, all that stuff. So that's another way that folks get you is, is, is the books and records, the money. You've got to have your, your stuff tight um, as, you're, as you're leading out in this world and trying to become a disruptor. Yeah. So, so even though that's not the literal um, uh, discussion here, you, you have to understand that oftentimes the folks who hurt you are the folks who are closest to you. Yes. You have to understand that player hating is real. Yeah. <laughs> you, ha you have you have to understand that people can mean well and want and, and an unconscious desire to destroy you because yeah. you're, you challenge or threaten what they're doing. Right. Uh, and you and you have to you you have to get up in the morning understanding that, that capitalism is warfare. It is it is a gladiator sport. And if you are running a nonprofit or a faith institution, and you don't believe you're engaging in some form of, of ancillary capitalism, then you walk up on the wrong side of the bed because yeah. you cannot pay your bills or your mortgage without money. Yeah. Uh, so all of this, all, all of this, I mean, Jesus talked about money a lot. Yes. The Bible talks about money. Yeah. Um, it's not the love of, money's not evil. It's the love of it. Right. It's the greed. It's, right. it's, it's, it's the avarice. So, yeah. uh, let's 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 reset and yeah. let's ha let us have a new kind of conversation because today i'm the largest nonprofit financial inclusion organization in the country right uh and run the largest for-profit minority owner of single family rental homes also uh in the country yeah and and no one's running their mouth anymore right. um but I had to punch through it. I had to keep moving. Yeah. Um, I had to keep my head down. Yeah. Uh, I, I had to believe that what I was doing was right. Yes. Keep in mind, last point, when when uh, when Steve Jobs did what he did, he was written off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this is, by the way, the fact that I'm about to mention white entrepreneurs is a problem. But the fact is that Steve Jobs did that, he was written off. When mm -hmm. Bill Gates, who I just saw two weeks ago, He's actually not a very nice person. Uh, when I saw him two weeks ago at a meeting, uh, he's not a he's not a jerk. He's just not. It's just not being nice is not part of his how he's built. He's just a brain. Um, but but I do give him credit for create, creating Microsoft and the Gates Foundation. Um, but people blew, wrote wrote him off when yeah. he when he did that. Right. And whoever did, built whatever, right? They were written off and dismissed yeah. when they did it because they were ahead of the curve. Yeah, Reverend Murray. Reverend Murray was player hated within the AME Absolutely. church. Absolutely, Bish people bishops people were. Yeah, people don't bishop, people don't mention that part, but absolutely, yeah. Bishops, bishops, and presiding bishops, and whatever were were intimidated, were yes. uh, insecure. Yes, about Reverend Murray's right. uh, credibility and power. They right. they would have moved him if they could have gotten away with it. Absolutely, but but they just decided to isolate him mm -hmm. because he was a threat to their power base. Yeah. That wasn't personal, right. just business. Mm -hmm. um, and he had to, and I learned valuable lessons from Reverend Murray, mm -hmm. like talk without being offensive, mm -hmm. listen without being defensive, yeah. and always leave even your adversary with their dignity. Yeah. Because if you don't, they'll spend the rest of their life trying to make you miserable, exactly. it becomes personal. Yeah. And, and so decrease yourself, increase others. Don't talk about yourself. Talk about the person you're meeting with. How are you doing? What is your day like? Oh, I heard that you <laughs> got an award. Wife, That's children. Yeah. How's your wife? How's your children? How's Oh, yes. How's your cousin? And he's you? still like <laughs> that. He is still that way. Very consistent. <laughs> Absolutely. And then he gets you off the phone right after that. So says, <laughs> right after you finish talking. Oh, well, it's been so nice talking to you. I've got to go now. Yeah. Talk, I'm praying for you. Right. <laughs> At his 6 a.m. prayer time. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I'm, you know, look, even after COVID-19 more so, you know, I think that a majority of African-Americans by virtue of our 40-year oppressive history were yeah. depressed, clinically undiagnosed, undiagnosed depressed before yeah. COVID-19. I think half the world's depressed today. So if you're dealing with depressed people who are smart, yeah. who are crafty, who are intelligent, uh, but just depressed, then you under you got an emotional hand grenade in your hand. Absolutely. And you gotta you gotta put it down very gently, yeah. or it will explode in your hands and take you with it. You, you gotta deal with people very delicately. People are very delicate creatures, particularly right now. Yeah. You know, why do we kill Jesus? Too much truth. Why do we kill Dr. King? Too much truth.
-hmm. Why do we kill Gandhi? Yeah. Too much truth. Yeah. Why do we kill Malcolm X? Yes, I put him in that path. Yes, because he had went to Mecca. Yeah. Come back and said, oh my God, all white people are not the devil. I just prayed with white people truth. in Mecca. He was dead within two weeks mm -hmm. because he was messing with somebody's business plan. Right. Uh, who needed uh, who needed an enemy? Yeah. So so I'll stop there. But uh, uh, somebody just said, Stacy says too much truth. Exactly right. <laughs> so we're going to talk about some truth here today, yeah. and I'm going to try to keep from getting knocked off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I appreciate it, and uh, and thank you for the historical context and framing. Um, and there, there was and and I'm I want to lead in today's conversation with something I heard you say. Um, I was on one of your live streams, which I'm often watching because there's a lot of truth that you share and I appreciate. And I, let me go back. You one time, once a long time ago, brought uh, Andrew Young to Los Angeles. It was in Santa Monica, next yeah. next door to the Shutters Hotel. I'm not sure which room that was. And he said something that actually changed my life. And he talked about um, that there just aren't enough jobs in America and that entrepreneurship has to be the way. And ever since then, I have always had my own business outside of my work environment. So that conversation with Andrew Young changed my life. Um, so by, I want to- by the, by the way, Dr. Young, we don't have time to go into this and we probably shouldn't, but I'm glad that that changed your life. I'll let him know that Please. because that trip changed his life. We yeah. don't, we weren't, we're not going to go into details, but yeah. there were a group of people Mm -hmm. masquerading as friends who undermined his credibility during that trip. Um, and a little controversy came out of that trip uh, that changed some of his activities. Again, I'm not getting into detail, but th they were fr the folks who did this to him were friends. So Ambassador Young, his whole career has dealt with jealousy. Yeah. Um, from within the movement yes. of leaders, of civil rights leaders who felt they should have been Dr. King yes. or they should have been Andrew Young. You know, why, 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 why did they get that prominence and not me? Yeah. And so he didn't, he doesn't mind it. He, he, he shrugged it off, but yeah. that trip uh, hurt him. Mm. Uh, uh, and I'm sure he will love that it helped you. Yes. And it's something that I tell even my congregation about entrepreneurship. And I always quote what he said about there's just not going to be enough jobs in America and entrepreneurship is the way of the future. Um, so I, I share that all the time. So, but that's a, another conversation. We have to bring you back to talk about entrepreneurship. Um, but today we're talking about building wealth, especially within communities of color. And you said something I thought was real interesting about Black Wall Street or the notion of Black Wall Street and how it was not replicated. One of the disappointments in that narrative is that it wasn't replicated anywhere else in America. And so could you speak to that and then go into what has held us back from replicating that, that community where everybody was business owners and building wealth and so on and so forth. And then we'll get into, you know, where do we go from here from, a, from the pandemic, as well as what's the role of faith leaders um, in this whole process? Yeah, so part of this conversation is sad. Because, um, you know, I'm going to have to say something that is uh, uh, distressing. There was no Black Wall Street. <laughs> there was a Black community that owned some businesses. <laughs> That's called normal. <laughs> okay. There was a Black community that owned some homes. Yeah. That should be called normal. That should be normal. Uh, yeah. uh, this, what we call Black, this is what hurts me so much. Right. The, and I know we're talking to everybody here, yes. but, uh, but but Reverend Murray is African American. This is his center. This is the, the, the one of the aggrieved communities that we're trying to address uh, right. is the African American community. If you help that community, you can help, then help Latinos, you can help Asian, you can help Indians, you can help others, but then poor whites because they are less aggrieved than this uh, community because we were enslaved. So I'm, just, I'm contextualizing, Please. are we gonna micro focus for minute on on Black America, African American America. By the way, we're not our Nigerian African friends don't have ghettos. Absolutely. Our Caribbean Black African friends don't have ghettos. Yes. Our African African friends, only African Americans have, ghetto. have ghettos, mm -hmm. and the and and only us are uh, 
have confused mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. main a right. properly run Main Street mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. a non-functioning, non-existent Wall Street. Right. So look, uh, Tulsa was fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tulsa was was beautiful. Tulsa was aspirational. And even after Tulsa, by the way, was burned down, we the story if you don't know, we built it back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Tulsa ultimately sort of drifted away in the 60s because of actually integration. Yes. Not the clan. Mm -hmm. We decided we wanted to go have coffee uptown, not not hang out downtown. We wanted to buy someplace else. We wanted to, uh, and I don't begrudge that. Yes. But versus desegregating our communities, we wanted to integrate other places. And this is one of the things that Dr. King believed he had failed at mm. later in his life. Yes. He felt that he felt he failed to integrate the money. Yeah. That and Ambassador Andrew Young once said, who was right at Dr. King's arm when he was shot and assassinated in Memphis, he said. Uh, to live in a system of free enterprise and not to understand the rules of free enterprise must be the definition of slavery. Yes. I'll repeat, to live in a system of free enterprise and capitalism and not to understand the rules of free enterprise and capitalism must be the very definition of slavery. If you wanna see that today, you go in our, our average neighborhood, here's what you see, a mm -hmm. check casher next to a payday loan lender, yeah. next to a rent to own store, next to a title lender, next to a liquor store, next to a pawn shop. Right. Right next to a renting rim store, renting furniture store. Right now next to a uh, smoke spot. So what, what next to a what now? Now next to a smoke shop. Next to a smoke shop, stop smoke shop, and a in a church down the street. That's your local psychologist. That's your unofficial shrink, mm -hmm. trying to make you give you some 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 freedom and liberty and in, in whatever once a week, so you don't go cray cray. Right. So this is a 500 credit score neighborhood. This is a 600 credit score neighborhood. Half of black folks have a credit score below 620. Please, everybody listen to me. Please listen. I didn't say poor people. Oh, John. Everybody. Yeah. Half of, of African-Americans in America, the largest economy in the world, the sole superpower in the world, where the most wealth is occupied in the world, half of black people, just under half, 41, 45% of black people have a credit score below 620, which means you can't get a good mortgage. Yeah. You can't get a decent car loan. You can't get decent consumer credit and you and forget having a business idea and trying to get a bank to fund it because they won't fund anything below 700 credit score because it's called right. risky credit. Right. You have to be at least 700 to take risky credit if you're a banker. And we don't hit that mark. So when we, when the bank tells us no, we assume that's racism. It might be, by the way, racism, but it's racism plus, <laughs> plus the fact that you don't <laughs> right, qualify. Yeah, that's right. So let's back up because I'm now, I've got me, me back up and go back to Tulsa now because yeah. it, let me uh, say something pretty provocative here. There's a pro pro couple of problems with the Tulsa model. It wasn't Wall Street. Wall yeah. Street's a city, it's Manhattan. Yes. Yes. It's a whole city. And Manhattan produces three times more revenue than Washington, D.C., by the way, yes. every year. Every year. Yes. Wall, Street, Wall Street is its own country economically. Mm -hmm. You could mm -hmm. pull out Manhattan out of the U.S. And it would be it is the largest economy in the United States of America. It is a separate economy from the U.S. economy <laughs> inside of the U.S. economy. Right. 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 Um, you can't take P Tulsa, which is a, I don't know, four, eight square block area, whatever it was, and pull it out and have it be self-sustaining right. uh, and, and, and do any, so it was a neighborhood that yeah. was self-sustaining yes. and it was representative of, you know, uplift and aspiration. That's fantastic. Right. But it was not replicated in other cities. Right. It was not widespread around the country. Right. It wasn't wild, even widespread in Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It was just um, that location. Yeah. Yes. Number two, in order to be Wall Street, you need a capital market. Facility. You need you need you need cap access to capital, mm -hmm. debt, and equity. So you need banks and venture capital. Teach John. Right? Mm -hmm. You you in order to be Wall Street, you need you need people who have a baseline of financial literacy and financial education. Yeah. The Freedmen's Bank of and this goes into your second question of what, what, why you know, what, what 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 boat did we miss? Most yeah. people don't even know Dr. Uh, Najuma. They don't even know that that after the Civil War. There was a Freedmen's Bureau that created, yeah. yes, uh, HBCUs. And yeah. yes, uh, and by the way, which came mostly from Black Church. Black right. Church, the AME Church, was responsible for the first Black corporation 
the first black newspaper, the first mm -hmm. black hospital, the first black business, uh, first black educational institution came out of AME churches, churches and, and yeah. churches in general. Uh, Clark Atlanta University yes. in Atlanta, which I just cut a deal with for one million black businesses, and we announced it earlier this week. That really? came out of the church. I think, yes. it was, I, think it was called, I think it was called Friendship Baptist Church in the 18. Uh, 1800, that was September 1865. Right. Um, they were the first institution to you know, provide advanced degrees for black people, first institution to give women, black women degrees and create a black yes. dormitory in 1870. Yes. We have to know our history. So, but right after in the Juma, right after the Civil War and the Freedmen's Bureau Act was also the Freedmen's Bank. Yes, Freedmen's Bank. People don't even know and about Freedmen's Bank. Don't know. Well, let's back up. You've got 40 acres yes. and a mule. That was, so you had Field Action 15. Yes. which was, we don't have time for this, this history lesson, but the short version is <laughs> that was that was 20 ministers in Savannah, Georgia, who yeah. were asked, what do you want of the slavery? Did they, do you want a handout program? No. Do you want mm -hmm. welfare? No. What do you want? We want to do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want land. So they said, fine. Field Action 15 is, is 18,000 acres yes. um, down the coast. And by the way, this is the agricultural age, so coastal property, which is sexy now. I'm at the, I'm on, I'm on the California coast now, speaking at a conference. Uh, but but back then it was horrible. You you plant your seeds for agriculture in the in the beach. You, you wake right. up your crops in Jamaica. But we we didn't complain about it. We got right. busy. We worked yeah. that so hard. They said, "My God, they're so industrious. Give them a mule." So now right. January 1865, the land. February 1865, the mule. March 1865, the bank. Come on. Come on. The bank charter to teach you about money, domiciled your savings, protect you from financial predators who were existing back then. We had a payday loan lender example back then on in those union union army camps trying to separate black union soldiers from their wallet back then in 1865. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and by the way, this black bank was created by a black man, a pastor out of uh, New York City. But Lincoln codified it in the law. Now, right. Lincoln was killed in April of the same year. So January the land, February the mule, Mar February, March the bank, the Freedmen's Bank. Right. Lincoln, Lincoln is assassinated in April for, for promising blacks the right to vote. Booth said that's a bridge too far. Right. So it's not like, and this is my, the book, the book that I've written now is called Up From Nothing, which is, I think is the best book, but the book before that was called The Memo. Mm -hmm. And what I keep saying is we, we never got the memo yeah, on free enterprise memo. and capitalism. Right. right. We never got the memo on how, go ahead. No, I was gonna say we've always missed the memo. That's part of the challenge is not getting the memo. That is right. Yeah. So so we we are experts at civil rights, not civil rights. Yeah. We're experts in what happens in the streets, not the business suites. Yeah. We're experts at, at the kind of justice about keeping bad things from happening to good people, not mm -hmm. creating good things that happen to that happen to seemingly good people at mm -hmm. scale, which is about free enterprise, capitalism, economics, ownership. It's not just cashing a check, working for somebody, but writing a check working for yourself, which is what you're doing and what we're talking about. Right. So because that bank, and Frederick Douglass tried to run the bank after Lincoln was assassinated, he thought it was that important. And Frederick Douglass, by the way, was a capitalist. Absolutely, absolutely. He owned $6 million worth of real estate in Baltimore, Maryland, yeah, which gave him the financial freedom, gave him yeah. the financial freedom to, to be a, a, an abolitionist and a civil rights leader. Right. Right. Um, that, by the way, that was all of their stories. Dr. King worked for free because his daddy and his granddaddy owned land. Right. His daddy, his, uh, his uh, Dr. King's father served on the board of Citizens Trust Bank for 40 years. Okay, so 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 our <laughs> history really stopped yes. uh, in 1874 when the bank was uh, uh, was abused and mm -hmm. it went away. So now that we, so our opportunities to have what I call the Jewish experience. Mm -hmm which is the five pillars of success, my last book. As much education you shove down your throat, understanding how economics work, the math of right. the matter, family structure and resiliency, self-esteem and confidence, role models and environment. And if you hang around nine broke people, you'll be the 10th. The 10th. I always quote that, by the way. I don't know if you said it. <laughs> I know, I've heard you say it. So I quote, I give you the credit for that. But uh, I don't know if you said it. Oh, so no. <laughs> no, no, I copied it. Best things in life are copied. Um, <laughs> Uh, Dr. King once said it to his pastor yeah. friends. He said, "Hey, Joe, that's a great quote. Like three, first three times I'll give you credit. The fourth time that's is mine." Right. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. so Operation Hope decided to pick up where Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln, and a hundred years later, when Dr. King came back with the Poor People's Campaign, right. which was about redeeming, which was trying to get all black people and Latinos and poor whites into the economic system, and right. he was assassinated before he started. Yeah. We decided to pick that mantle up 
and move us from civil rights in the streets to civil rights in the, in the suites and to actually build an economic infrastructure, right. an economic system, rebootable, yeah. scalable, software upgradable, um, national system yeah. for Black America and the underserved for which we can plug into right. and we can platform yeah. at scale right. to give us all the levers of a true um, Wall Street. So. Right. Aspirationally, Tulsa was beautiful as a story and as a texture, but it was just it was just black people doing what normal people should do. And I think that's the that's part of why I wanted you on it, and even why we have been running financial literacy training, working with faith leaders and faith communities for the last I'm almost say almost seven eight years at the Murray Centers because it's like it's it's to normalize everything you're saying, normalize understanding around comp capitalism, normalize financial literacy, normalize business ownership, normal, it's, it's not normal. And so the story of Tulsa becomes this, this fantasy story and it gets better and better every year um, because we have not normalized what should be for black folks, land ownership, home ownership, business ownership, investment, savings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, it's worse, it's worse, it's worse, it's worse Dr. Najuma. Not yeah. only have we not normalized it, not only have we not normalized the, the, the business plan, we normalized the trauma. Yes. So, what, so what you hear about, uh, about Tulsa is the rioting, the looting, Mm -hmm. the the rape and the pillage the murder of whites against black we obsessed it was horrible is this it should be recorded it should be part of our history it yeah. should the story should be told but we spend 90 percent of our time yeah focused on the, the injustice the trauma yeah. see there are three types of mentalities in the world please listen to me if you guys are listening it's my it book up from nothing but write this down I've given you the five pillars of success, right? And if you yeah. have five of those pillars, four of those pillars, three of those pillars, you'll be successful. The mm -hmm. problem that black, the reason black Af African Americans, poor whites, and Native American Indians have not been successful as a group is we don't have the minimum of three of those pillars. The five pillars I mentioned, we don't have three. And that's when your car stalls. That's like it's like running, it's like it's like the car doesn't have any gas anymore. It's like wow. that you need a, a, a yeah. tune up and you you're you're sputtering, you don't have enough momentum to, to yeah. go forward. You have four or five of those things you'll succeed. Now, here are the three mentalities that overlay that. Please listen. There's a, there's a winning mentality. Dr. Najuma is a winner. She knew she was a winner before she won anything. Reverend Murray, Mark Whitlock, they're winners. They knew they were a winner before they ever won anything. Yeah. It's a mentality, it's a mindset. Number two, and how do you become a winner? You get those five pillars I mentioned to you. Get four of them, <laughs> right. all right? Number number two, it's a, it's a thriving mindset. That's mm -hmm. middle class. Yeah. That's folks it, who, it's a getting business. I want to get a, a salary increase. I want to get a vacation. I want to get access to a club. I want to get access to USC. I want to get access to the issue, I, it's, a, it's a middle class, it's fine, it's beautiful. That's the way the world works. And, and that's the majority of people. Right. The people who cash checks, not write them. But the third piece is the troubling piece. That's the surviving class. Mm. And the surviving class has always been with us, Najuma. Yes. It's been 20% of America. You know, yeah. you come here off the boat or wherever you come, you're in, you, 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 you're an immigrant, whatever. Oh. You're, you're on that treadmill, you're trying to make it, right? I survive, problem, yeah. The problem today, Dr. Najuma, is that that surviving class is probably half of America. Mm. That mindset right now, and that's why the politics of the way they are today is based on fear. Uh, that's why every, if you think about what I just said, everything makes sense. If half of this country is depressed and in a surviving mindset, it's easy to play on you, play yeah. on your fears, play on your insecurities. Uh, pay, play, play on your, your on your PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, yeah. get you emotional so you don't ever even focus on your business plan. What did Dr. King? What did uh, yeah. What did uh, Malcolm X say? You've been bamboozled. You've been tricked. You've been fooled. <laughs> hoodwinked. You've been hoodwinked. Yeah. So so the surviving mindset has us obsessed with the pain of our experience. That's but good. what we should be doing is replicating the promise. Yeah of Tulsa. Yeah. What lessons did we learn? Yeah. Yeah. What can be amplified? Right. What right. happens when you have a stable family? Yeah. What happens when you have high self-esteem? Yeah. What happens when you have business role models? What right. happens when you're, if you're an engineer, your son will probably be an engineer. What yeah. happens when you, when you, when you don't have financial stress, you stop arguing as, as partners, husband and wife and so on and so forth. What happens when you get higher education? 
what mm-hmm. happens with the crime? Where, where does crime go down? What does hope go up? Uh-huh. What is stability? We so we gotta we gotta get out of this surviving mindset. Yeah. And 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 move and and then worse as you know, many of us are now in the spectator mindset. We just we're, we're not even yeah. We're just watching and re- and reporting on social media. Mm-hmm. On somebody else's wealth. You talking about you know we we we, we hating on talking spending hours talking about somebody else's life. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. And that that was why we had the other prompt with and I don't I don't want I'm not interrupting you because I'm really enjoying this but I want to No, no, please do. is is like so how do we how do we even in this pandemic as we're at, you know I don't some say we're coming out of it some say we're not I don't know but like how do we even take what has now been another layer of an opportunity to be in trauma and to survive like okay now we're surviving this like how do we as a community even move through this pandemic and con- and con- and with the same conversation around wealth building and economics, like what's your, how do we do that? You know, rainbows with- after ra- rainbows after storms. Mm-hmm. Look, uh, and Jesus is G- G- the height of Jesus's pain was also the height of Jesus's promise. I mean, he was being crucified. This is Jesus Christ now, and he said, uh, and I, now I'm not a pastor. You got to correct me, but essentially he said something like. Uh, in a moment of deep pain, Lord, Father, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. A moment of insecurity, a moment of fear, a moment of... And then at the end, he said, forgive them, Lord, they know not what they do. Yeah. I think I got that right. It, and, you're, close. And so, you're close enough. It's, he said it all together. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, but, yeah. but, but, but the point is, he was on this route of being yeah. crucified. So if, if the greatest human being on the planet can show some insecurity, yeah. so can you. Absolutely. And and he can make that journey from from fear to faith. So can you. Yeah. And and so uh, there's never been a more traumatizing time than now. Yeah. But there's never been a more promising time than Come now. On. On. If you're black and educated and well-meaning and walking down the street, somebody's going to pull pull up to you at the bus stop, throw you in the car and try and give you a job. I have never seen it has never <laughs> been more popular. Listen, than, than I said black. to my church, I said, listen. If you ever thought about being a business owner, entrepreneur, this is the season because they're literally doling out money and and assistance, technical. I was just listening to on the news. Uh, uh, Facebook is offering a whole series on training and how to scale on Facebook. So I, I just had to jump in there because that's something that I've been saying to our church. Like if there was ever a time for black folks to say, I want to try at entrepreneurship or a business, this is the season. Yeah. Let me tell you what, if you white it, 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 watching this, you Latino watching this, you Asian watching this, you whatever watching this, you better go get your DNA test and it seem try, try to find one, <laughs> one, one ounce of black blood. I'm black in you. you. <laughs> uh, this is the time, this is the time for everybody to be black. I, yeah. I, there are 35, there's $35 billion of money from corporations committed to social justice since George Floyd's murder in 2020. Wow. Najima, Najima, yeah, 35 billion, wow. billion, yeah. right? That, that's real money, right? Yeah. And, and, and versus sitting there criticizing, oh, well, they're not probably, that's, that money is not real. Well, how do I know? Look, it's a press release. Go to the press release, go to the website and challenge them on it. Question, yeah. try to, try to, access the programs, like, like apply for them. So it reminds me, Jesse Jackson once said, you, yeah. you know, there's two hobos, one of them got kicked off the, well, both of them got kicked off the train, they're not paying. <laughs> one of the hobos said, I'm so upset at this dang here train station, I want to buy this train. And the other hobo said, I'm so upset, I'm going to sell it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to stop yeah. spectating and observing what's going on. Yeah. And get in the game. Let's let, let let's challenge this. So I raised two hundred million dollars last year, Doctor Nijima. Wow. Right, two hundred so million dollars from Zoom. Number again for those that didn't just from that. one of my companies. <laughs> I raised two hundred million dollars. Yeah. In the middle of a pandemic from Zoom. Come on. From Zoom, right? Because I was focused on the rainbow after the storm, not the trauma. Do you know? Do you know that Wall Street picked up a trillion dollars of additional wealth? So if you own, if you're black or brown or whatever, and you own some stock, you own Zoom, you own, you own Facebook, whatever, you you own whatever, some yeah. stock in 2020, your net worth went up. Yep. 
Absolutely. You, 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 you didn't get smarter. Yeah. <laughs> if you bought equities and just sat on them, right, they, they went up in value. There's four mm-hmm. things that have never reversed in value in this country. Stock market value. Mm-hmm. They've done this and done this and done this. Yeah. This and this. This yeah. and this. Correct, correction and up. Real yeah. estate value. My real estate went up $25 million last year. Yeah. I didn't do nothing. No, I'm no genius. It's just, it, because people want to, they wanted distance. They wanted to be in a single family home versus an apartment building if they could yeah. uh, for an affordable rent. Um, the, the GDP, gross domestic product, never, never has gone down. Mm-hmm. And the prospects of 55 year old college educated white men have never gone backwards in the history right. of this country. Exactly. So yeah. why, why are my white friends upset about diversity and inclusion? You're going to always have an opportunity. We're just talking about expanding the table and adding a chair. Mm-hmm. Why are my black friends not taking care of, taking advantage of every opportunity available to them? Because this is the moment in history that you've been waiting for as a 40 year old social justice refugee of black America. Whatever idea you have, whatever vision you have, whatever thoughts you have, whatever, this is the time to operationalize it uh, and to get into the game and take your piece of this pie uh, and, and contribute to the American experience because the new color is green. It's not black or white or red or blue. It's green. Can you produce some green, some opportunity, some relevancy, some value for somebody? This is that time. So we should be, I did one deal job, with Shopify for $130 million. Yeah. One deal, yeah. $130 million deal. Another deal for $20 million from Truist a bunch of other deals, add up $200 million. I got another deal I did with my, my, in the middle of a pandemic for my real estate company for multi-millions of dollars at 2% cost of equity. That's what that's what the biggest institutions in America pay for their equity. I got it. Uh, anyway, the point is we can do this. That that's, is the point. That's the point. That's the point. Yeah. And I and I and I and I was going to say that, I, you know, is that I don't want anyone on here to think, well, John has got a business. And he says, listen, it's not about the level, it's about engaging. And this is why we're having this conversation to really iterate that as communities of color, we have to engage. And there's, these are opportunities available to engage. And what I wanna ask you finally, John, as we come to the end of our conversation, but I wanna, well, we have a few questions in the chat, is what's the faith community's role in this process of engagement? Because I absolutely, it's not a matter of, should we engage, it's a matter of, how and 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 the and the when question is right now and you've answered that for us but what's the faith community's role in this in this conversation around wealth building within our communities of color what do you see as a primary role for the church or the faith community to include faith-based nonprofits i think the cecil chip murray center should write a business plan on what dr murray did after the civil unrest because essentially you need to go back 28 years and basically copy his business plan. Okay, done. We're he, cre- do- he, cre- he created the, he created <laughs> a micro, he created a venture capital fund. Mm-hmm. He created a, remember Mark Whitlock? Yes. He created the, 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 the basically small business incubator. Mm-hmm. Um, he created a distribution network uh, for everything from food and shelter to mm-hmm. job training, uh, to entrepreneurship development, to entrepreneurship funding. He became, so. So in the, right now you have a, a couple trusted institutions in America and the world. You have the private sector, yes, and entrepreneurs and business people. Yes. you have faith institutions. Yes, you have nonprofits. Yes, you check you check half of those boxes, yes. and you can partner with the other half of those boxes. Yes, the government actually needs you to do its job right now. Come on, teach. Exactly. The government needs you, the faith community, to do its job right now. Stop looking at yourself as some uh, local nonprofit with your hand out or mm-hmm. local, oh, we just a local. No, no, no. You are the distribution center yeah, for right. the largest untapped emerging market in the country. Look, yeah. the Citigroup report, you can pull that up. Citigroup report proved uh, that discrimination against Blacks in the last 20 years alone mm-hmm. cost American GDP, gross domestic product, $16 trillion. Yeah. Trillion. So the whole U.S. economy every year, Dr. Njuma, is twenty trillion. Yeah, yeah. We're the largest economy in the world. So black discrimination in the last twenty years, since the year twenty twenty, cost American economy sixteen trillion dollars, and we just knock it off right now. The country picks up a trillion dollars in additional revenue. What I'm saying is, let's stop looking at ourselves as charity. 
Mm-hmm. Let's stop looking at ourselves as a handout campaign. Let's stop looking at ourselves as, as some sort of afterthought. No, no, no. There's a fortune locked in the bottom of the American pyramid. At half the economy and below, there's two to three percent of the GDP, which right. is trillions of dollars, right. locked because we, don't, we, we because our credit scores are screwed up, yes. because I mean, our, our minds are screwed up, Absolutely. because our mindsets are surviving and spectating. Because we're not becoming going from renting to homeowner. Because oh, yeah. we're not going from small business dreaming to small business owning. Because yeah. we're not taking risk. We're, we're because we're not becoming investing in the wall in stock market. Yeah. Because we're not we're not getting higher educated. You know, you if you just get higher educated, that you're gonna you're gonna get a million dollar uh, income boost over the history of your of your of whatever job you're gonna get. Yeah. You want you want a bulletproof career? Somebody watching this, become an engineer. <laughs> Yeah. Any kind of engineer. It's bulletproof. Only five yeah. percent of blacks are engineers. Only seven percent of women. So, so, so the faith community mm-hmm. and the nonprofit sector yes. needs to organize itself. Stop looking at yourself as competitors because right. there's enough poverty to go around. Okay. Stop <laughs> looking at yourself. You're, you're not a competitor. The, right. the guy down the street, or the lady down the street, running another organization is a collaborator, not a competitor. Yeah. Operation has five thousand partners. Five thousand. I want yeah. every one of them to succeed, Dr. Yeah. Najuma. Absolutely. You know, your success does not hinder my success. Your yeah. success bolsters my success. Absolutely. If there's somebody watching this saying, yeah. who does he think he is? <laughs> I'm tired. You know, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, Absolutely. That's a head job that's been played on you. I'm yeah. rooting for you. I don't even know who you are. Right. Why wouldn't you not be rooting for everybody who looks like you was successful? Absolutely. And what Why I wouldn't you? Yeah. And what I'm hearing yeah. from you, John, is that a great deal of this is is it comes down to, and I know this is a word that has become very popular in the last maybe 10 years or so, mindset, but it really yeah. does come down to mindset. And that's one of the things that I get from you a lot is your mindset. And I want to just share with everybody, like, first of all, yes, this live will be available. You can watch it a million times. Take and keep taking notes because every time you watch it, you're going to hear something new. Go get his books, all that great stuff. But it really, what I'm, what I, and I, what I'm hearing from you is that the church, the nonprofit sector, as a whole, we have to have a mindset change to organize with with our organize together, collaborate together, partner together, to move this conversation forward. And um, this is powerful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we need to set ourselves free. This is the third reconstruction, Dr. Najuma. Yeah. The first reconstruction was physical physical freedom. That got you from the fields to the factories. Mm-hmm. Second reconstruction was was um, political and uh, physical freedom. Uh, mm-hmm. Got you and 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 jobs, yeah. which got you from uh, you know the factories to basic mm-hmm. freedom. Um, access. Yeah. Dr. King gave his life so that you can get so to take that to take that a white side right. on. But now we need to go from from freedom uh, to really um, free thinking. Wow. We really need to be be looking about not just cash and checks, but writing them. I love it. We, we need to be <laughs> wealth creation in this country <laughs> comes from business ownership. Eighty-eight percent of all jobs in this country are private sector jobs. One hundred percent of all legitimate wealth is comes from business. Comes from wealth, from business, business, business. The reason we created celebrities in America is because Europe had royalty. That's exactly why America created celebrities so that we have something to bling about. But yeah. that's not where wealth comes from. But you got you cannot have forty-eight million black people trying to be five thousand rappers, five thousand professional athletes. The numbers don't work. You need professional careers and you need professional and you need to you need a, a serious purpose all about your life even the rappers i know want me to mentor them i right. don't want to mention their names but their household names i mean right. top rappers like john yeah. show me how to be do this business thing man yeah yeah because because they've learned we've, we've seen enough of them of all genres of hip-hop rap but even athletes and you know movie stars that they have made boatloads of wealth and then end up poor and broke because they didn't have a John Bryan mentoring them about what to do with their money. I think from one of the saddest shows me that I cannot watch, and then we're going to take a couple of questions because we're almost at our 1030 time, yeah. is 30 for 30. And to look at all those yeah. and those sad stories, how these men yeah. and women made millions of dollars and now they're yeah. broke. They have addiction challenges and so many other things that they mental health challenges that they can't even afford to get help for, physical challenges that they can't even afford to get medical attention for. 
um, because they didn't have a John Bryant. So I, I totally believe you I, I, because, I mean, we see it because we don't have a John Bryant in our lives on a regular basis to mentor us and have this conversation. Um, and we have a question. Hey, hey, hey Dr. Julie, before you, before you pivot, let me say one last thing. There's a cynic out there saying, I hear what John Bryant's saying, but I don't trust capitalism. Just give me the money. Let me let me answer this. Let me Please. just answer this. Please. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just going to cut to the end. I'm going to give you two examples. If if you, you win the lottery, and by the way, 70% of those, 70% of those win the lottery and they're bankrupt in five years. You win the lottery. Somebody. Yeah, I know somebody who did. Five million go. dollars you, and we broke within two years. Poof, gone. So you win the lottery and you see a homeless guy on the, on, on the off ramp. You, you, the goodness of your heart, you're a Christian. You want to hook them up. You give them a million dollars. Yeah. If you change nothing else in, that, in a homeless guy's life, or he changes nothing else in his life, his life's his responsibility, he'll be broken. He'll be broken five years. Yeah. I'll go one step further. Take all the wealth in the world, distribute all the wealth in the world, the top 3%, everybody in the world equally. Mm -hmm. The top 3% will have it back in three to five years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they got the memo on how wealth creation worked. And everybody did not. There's a difference between making money, getting paid. I want this money. I want this dollar. Give me that check. The difference between that and building wealth. Yeah. Wealth is a mindset. Yeah. And you build wealth in your sleep. You only build wealth in your sleep. Stocks, bonds, investment, real estate, rental income, business income, compounding employees, uh, education. You build wealth in your sleep. So what I've you're doing in your hustle during the day, that's just cash flow. Yeah. And, and so if you get, if you're that professional athlete, you got that hundred million dollars and velocity goes, velocity is real. You got yes. that hundred million dollars and all you know how to do is spend. Mm. It's going to go right through your hands to somebody who actually understands money and understands wealth and they're going to be wealthy and you're going to be broke. Yeah. So even if you want to distribute money like a socialist, you got to first collect it like a capitalist. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I'm done. You got to. I'm, yeah, I'm, no, that, that was a mic drop. Even if you want to be a socialist, you got to think like a capitalist to achieve that. Absolutely. Um, Frank, Frank Jackson, who is our dear friend, and I want to say this about Frank Jackson, uh, John. Frank Jackson has, um, in with Village Solution, with his nonprofit, um, got a deal with Southern California Edison, where he is now mentoring um, African-American youth. I think there's about 20 of them in the program altogether. Uh, okay. High school graduates and college students, entry level co college students, I think first or second year um, okay. on infrastructure within SC SCE so they can do a paid internship. So he has this question. I just want to I want to highlight the work that he's doing because it speaks directly to what you're talking about as it relates to access training and thinking beyond um, receiving checks, but also writing checks. And so he's training these young people. To, so to get in a place where they can, they can be check writers and not just check receivers. But he asked Amen. the question about what do you think about Van Jones receiving $100 million? God bless my brother Van Jones. I wrote an article about it. I, I said it's three, three black men, $300 million. I got $130 million, actually more than that. Um, uh, Dr. George French got $100 million, raised it from uh, Clark Atlanta University. And Van Jones got $100 million from Jeff Bezos. We were just together two weeks ago with Jay Bo Jeff Bezos, a meeting I can't uh, describe, but and that's probably where the deal was cut. God bless him. He's spoken on the environment and criminal justice reform. I'm focused on economic empowerment and building an economic system for Black people. Dr. French is trying to educate us and get us into a new era of careers and jobs. And you need probably seven more people with $100 million each who look like us, men and women. Uh, you need a billion-dollar plan uh, of project or money. Uh, and probably need, you know, I don't know, you know, probably need 300 billion of public money following that. This mm -hmm. is why I want this infrastructure bill to come through and, and, re, and update update our, our physical infrastructure, which is why I love what he's doing with internships. Right. Um, I just, I love what Van Jones is doing. And why would anybody criticize it? This is what I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like, I like what Van Jones is doing much better than what other people are not doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, if you if you don't not you not this gentleman, but if somebody doesn't like what Van Jones is doing, go do go do something else yourself. And do something. Van, yeah. Van Jones not hating on somebody else. He's not stealing your money. He went yeah. out there and got his. We need to get out there and get ours, right? You know. <laughs> that's right. He ain't stealing no he ain't stealing on nobody's money. Yeah, I, and I think I think that's where you know this conversation sits for me and I and we're gonna in a minute we're gonna do a mentoring so please don't log off and thank you all for being a part of this conversation is celebrating what others are doing but also realizing that if I'm criticizing what someone else is doing 
then I need to look at myself and what, what am I doing to build wealth within my community, with my family, um, and not just critique and criticize because somebody else is in movement and in, you know, in movement and momentum, and I'm not. And no, 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 yeah. you're being too nice. You, you're being very <laughs> spiritual. You're being, you, no, 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 no. You need to knock it off. That's knock what you need off. to do. Yeah, you need to knock, because what you're doing is you're, you're traumatizing. The, the Dr. King once said that hate corrodes the container. That's hate true. and fear can corrodes the container it sits within. Yeah. Hurt people hurt people. If you're if you're hating on somebody else, you need to check yourself. Yeah. You got the wrong mindset. That Absolutely. will never work. Yeah. I can't guarantee you that being positive will make you a success, but I absolutely guarantee you that being negative will make you a failure. Come on. And here's what I know: successful people talk about their ideas. Mm -hmm. Failures talk about other people. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta knock it. You just need to knock it off. It doesn't. It doesn't pay a dividend. It doesn't help anything. There's a difference between a critique. And a criticism. Absolutely. You can critique Van Jones. You can critique John Hope Bryan. You can crit critique Reverend Murray. You know, I think I, I think you could tighten this up. You might be able to do this better. You know, I, I wonder whether this was the right business plan. Those are all fair questions. But mm -hmm. to criticize them, it's just player yeah. hating. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I agree. That's something agree. about you, not me. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Listen, we are at the 1030 hour and we said we weren't going to keep you past 1035. So we're going to do something first. I want to say, John, thank you. Um, this is a great lead in to, like I said, we will be kicking off our fifth year of doing our financial fitness program with CIT uh, Bank. And this is kind of like the kickoff conversation that leads into that, that will start next month. And so uh, they will, it will not be the last time you hear from us. Richard Flory already said to me, send yeah, me a private good. message. <laughs> uh, let's talk to John. <laughs> So we'll be talking some more um, for those of you that are on live with us and those that will watch this replay. Thank you for being part of this conversation. Thank you for taking time out of your day. I know you got something out of it. Um, Napa, can we put the slide back up with his, with John's books? Just one last time. Um, the author's page is also, the link was also in the chat. Um, if you are asking questions like what are the five pillars? Um, where's, what's the memo? What, you know, I didn't get the memo. What's the memo? Listen, it's all in his books. Everything that he shared this morning, it's in his books. And I'm not here to sell his books, but what I do know is that the books hold a lot of what you're asking about, um, and maybe want to hear more of, but also follow John Instagram, Facebook. He goes live. I think every day, don't you? Or just about every day. Yeah. Two and a half million days, followers, hundred million dropping, video views. dropping gems and, you know, but, it, but again, it's not for the 40 or 50 of us that have been on this, this Zoom call. It's for us to take this information back to our churches. If all the, I have several pastors on here, I know you, I see you. It's for you to take this back to your churches. For all of you that run nonprofits, take it back to your nonprofit boards. For all of you that are teachers, take it back to your students. Parents, take it back to your children, your youth. Um, and that's how we amplify this conversation. Um, and- and, and capitalism is part of the church. And anyone who thinks it's not has not accurately read your Bible and you have not accurately looked at how church and systems work. And so this is not a separate from or apart from our faith. This is part of it. And, um, and so I just want to encourage everyone to make sure you tap into, um, you just got an invitation from Marcus Tyson to come to West Angeles, John. <laughs> Oh, happy to do. I love West End. Oh my God. That was my honorary yeah. church when I was in LA. Yeah, Bishop, Bishop Blake, God bless him. He yeah. was my other protector. Reverend Murray and Bishop Charles E. Blake. Yeah. They said, don't mess with John Bryant. You mess with yeah. him, you mess with me. They gave me protection Absolutely. to go, go do my thing. I'll be, I'll be happy to show up. Yeah. I, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Uh, I'm on travel, but I stopped to do it because I think it's so important. Yeah. Um, and just keep in mind that special forces is more powerful than a, than a, than a mass army. You're a special forces team, this group watching this. What we need to do now is now take the message to the mass army. You know, Dr. King only had 70 employees. The whole civil rights movement was, was $500,000, 70 employees changed the world. First Amy Church only had 100 employees, Absolutely. Ch changed the world. You don't need a whole bunch of people. You need mm -hmm. the right people. And then I'm gonna make sure we join with you to get this. I'm gonna have my team get this message out to my two and a half million followers. We're gonna we're gonna make sure we get make sure that tens of thousands of people watch this video. I, I really think this conversation is important. 
Uh, yeah. Thank you, Stacy, for your comment. Thank you. you know, it's important for us to have, and we need to start having real talk with ourselves yeah. so we can have a real business plan for our lives. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, this, John, to your point, what's going to happen is uh, our USC team will edit the film, put the closed captions on it, and then it'll be available uh, within the 20, within 24 hours, I believe, and then we'll send yeah. it out. So everyone that's on live, you will see the replay and you'll get a message. Uh, we have your email. And so you'll get the notification. So real quick, we're going to do what we call a Mentimeter. I used to think, and now I think, if you go to, if you open up another portal, uh, another window in your browser and go to www.menti.com, and it's going to ask you for that um, seven digit code, put the number 2124175, and then you're going to fill in, I used to think, and now I think, and then that's going to populate and we're going to show it on the screen. So if you could do that for us. Um, thank you, Adrian. So glad you're on. Thank you to everyone that's on, to the pastors. Um, please make sure that you tap into Operation Hope as a resource um, for any training that you may need or want for your youth, um, as well as your adults around financial literacy. Um, they have a, and, and, as, and all of the nonprofits, uh, those of you that have any kind of nonprofit, Operation Hope, um, they used to have an office on La Brea. That's the one I used to go to all the time. Um, but go to Where? them online, find them. Uh, where is your where is the operational branch in Los Angeles presently? We 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 actually have twelve to fifteen locations in California. Okay. Um, and the and by the way, CIT, which is one of your which is your partner here, is yes. uh, is one of our uh, sponsors for Hope Insides. There, uh, Union Bank is a sponsor for Hope Insides. There, yeah. Wells Fargo is a sponsor for Hope Insides. There, um, Delta Airlines just uh, agreed to do financial coaching across the country for all their employees with us, including uh, offices there. So go to operational.org, go to the map or download the Hope in Hand app, find the location near you. We have 180 locations across the country, another 1,200 locations on contract to be open by over the next three to four years. Find mm -hmm. We'd like the Starbucks of financial inclusion. Find yeah. the location near you. Uh, the services are free. Get your credit score up, get your provability up, uh, get your self-esteem up, your confidence up, your, uh, your skills up, yes, and your mindset changed, uh, all for free. And the one being Black Business Initiative is something that we haven't had a chance to talk to, but that's something that also would benefit, I think, everybody uh, watching this program. And you can follow up with that. We may be doing a separate session on that, but that's a way for me to actually help you fundraise. You're a nonprofit or a church. I might be able to help you raise uh, six figures for your programming using our One Million Black Business Initiative and some matching grants that we have available. So we can talk about that, me coming back and talking about that. Absolutely. We'll definitely do that. So make sure that you go to Operation Hope. Is it .org, you said? .org, yeah. .org. Go to operationhope.org and look up that resource. Uh, so on the IU, and we definitely will talk more about the, 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 um, the, um, the grant uh, program that you have. Absolutely. Yeah, um, one Frank, like business. Frank Jackson asks, uh, I'd like to use your program with our interns. Absolutely, Frank. Um, it is available. So I used to think, and now I think, I want to have a winning and thriving mentality, not a surviving mindset. Absolutely. Uh, wealth was only for the wealthy. Nope, not anymore. Thank you. Uh, we need to focus on winning, not just surviving. Absolutely. That we need to win more. Yep. Cash checks, not write them. I know who wrote that one. Absolutely. I'm in the, let's write, let's write checks, not just cash them. Um, surviving and depression are equated to trauma. Yes. I have the ability to change how I think and engage the world and increase my financial literacy. Absolutely. That there was a Black Wall Street. Now I know that we have glamorized something that should have been considered as normal. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Moving civil rights to the streets, silver. in the streets to silver rights in the suites. Yes. Yeah, so silver is S I L V E R, but yes. Um, it's civil rights and silver rights, S-I-L-V-E-R, but we got you. <laughs> yeah, I used to yeah. think that church should not get involved in social enterprise and entrepreneurship. Now I think that ministry enterprise is vital. Absolutely. Engage the community. Absolutely. We have at Word of Encouragement Church an entrepreneur ministry. Um, and before the pandemic, we had, we would have workshops and we would do networking, um, opportunities at Word of Encouragement Church. And we called it, it was our entrepreneurship ministry. So to all my pastors, you can do social enterprise entrepreneurship ministries um, up under your nonprofit and or just have a ministry where you bring in people to speak on these matters of entrepreneurship, business, small business, et cetera, et cetera. 
critique is different from criticism. Stop hating. Absolutely. So as you all continue to, to do the Minty meter, thank you so very much, John. Thank you to everyone that is on. Thank you to our CRCC team um, that has helped make this happen. Uh, we have a couple of things coming up that we want to invite you to. Certainly, um, we want to invite you to our next critical conversation, which will happen September 30th. Um, that is in partnership with the, with the LA Region FBI around civil, civil rights, um, because a lot of that's a big conversation right now in the communities around um, the violence that we're seeing, experiencing. And so the FBI will be doing that September 30th. And then uh, we have Thriving Congregations, which is a Lilly funded program. So if you go to the um, go to the, um, the website there, crcc.usc.edu, um, and uh, join our newsletter. You'll get more information around reimagining church, thriving conversations. And this conversation around um, wealth building and financial literacy will be, will be a part of that um, uh, thriving congregations going forward. So, but it's all about equipping congregations um, um, and the like. So also follow us on social media. So we'll put up all of our social media. Uh, you can find us crcc at usc.edu. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on uh, Instagram as USC CRCC, USC CRCC. There you can find us. And so thank you again for your time, for your day. Um, can we send the Minty out as a poster? I think we can. Soraya would have to answer that question, but I think we can collect all of the Minty um, uh, posts and uh, send them out. So yes, we'll do that, Stacy. Thank you everyone for engaging. Please, please, please do two important, two important things. Number one, follow John on all his social. Number two, get at least one of his books. If you can't get all four of them, which I think you can, but get all, at least one of them for yourself and then get one for somebody else. Get one for yourself and then get one for somebody else. And uh, have a fantastic uh, Wednesday. Thank you, John, once again. I hope your trip is uh, blessed and your travels are safe. And we will talk soon, um, very, very soon. So thank you all, have a great day. And uh, you're welcome to sign off. And, uh, and certainly if you wanna put any greetings or anything in the chat, uh, you can do that as you sign up. But again, have a great day. And thank you so very much for today. John, thank you. We love you and we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to tell Papa Chip we had a great conversation. And I'm going to share this video with him as well. Well, it's basically in honor of him. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm only me because of him. And, and you are one of the greatest acolytes and one of the greatest uh, tributes to his leadership. And I'm so proud of you. They're lucky to have you. And you call on me any time. The reason I showed up is because you asked. You call on me <laughs> any time, and I'm uh, and I'm all over you like a cheap suit. Peace. And I life. appreciate that. I appreciate all that. Right. Peace, everyone. Love you. Take all care. Right. Love. Bye. Bye, bye, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.